What up YouTube? Uh, welcome to this uh, short video about the GR3X. Um, this is the uh, too long didn't watch version. So I'm gonna try and keep this nice and short. And uh, I'm gonna give you a longer review and comparison in another video. But this is the short version, so here we go. This is the new GR3X. And uh, the main difference being with this camera is that it now has a 26.1 uh, millimeter lens, which is uh, the equivalent of a 40 millimeter on a full frame. I uh, am not associated with Ricoh in any way. I'm just one of the lucky few that have managed to get their hands on uh, a model quite early. I don't believe it's available in, available in the US as yet, but um, it will be. So don't panic, it's coming your way. This is the original GR3. So should you get the GR3X? Well, if you like a 40 millimeter uh, uh, field of view on your lens, yeah, why not? Should you replace your original GR3? Um, I would say no. Should you get the GR3X or the GR3? Absolutely, get one of them because they are fantastic cameras. What is so fantastic about them? Well, look at the size of it. it fits in the palm of my hand. This one's currently got a thumb grip on, which you do not get when you get it. This is the original GR3 here. They're roughly the same size, these two. Uh, the GR3X, excuse me for one second. The GR3X is slightly thicker. You can see, if I turn them like that, this uh, lens ring is slightly deeper than the original GR3. Other than that, the cameras seem to be identical, but it is a little bit thicker. This is the uh, GC10 case, the leather pouch, which, which was made for the GR3. It fits in there nice and snugly with a magnetic clasp, protects your camera from dust in your pocket, and it is great. There has been a new one released with the same styling, same lap, uh, same magnetic clasp, and it's called the GC12, which will be available for the, uh, the GR3X sometime soon. I haven't been able to find uh, one anyway. I've, I've got a birthday coming up and uh, that would definitely be on my wish list, but um, I can't find one in any of the stores, not even the place where I bought the camera. So, it is thicker, it won't go in this case. Right now I'm using a, a neoprene pouch for this to keep it uh, protected from dust while it's in my pocket. And about the lens, the lens is fantastic. The new uh, lens is just as sharp or maybe a tad sharper than the original GR3. Um, the 40 millimeter field of view is just a little bit tighter and it, it just looks really, really good. What makes them so great? both of them the gr3 and the gr3x well as you know they're known as the king of street shooters 24 megapixel aps-c sensor very sharp lens when it's even wide open ibis in body sta image stabilization contrast and phase detection very small very lightweight but a good solid build with a magnesium alloy body uh built for one-handed use you've got all your controls over here and it's just a fantastic photographer's camera. It's got a built-in ND filter. It's got autofocus, autofocus, continuous, face and eye detect, manual focus, snap focus. Snap focus being the really big deal with this camera because snap focus uh, it will be faster than any of the latest autofocus systems on the biggest, uh, most expensive cameras. It just blows it away because it pre-focuses. Uh, it's got highlight metering mode, which is fantastic. Um, it uses the universal DNG RAW format, uh, so you can edit it in Lightroom, Lightroom Mobile, uh, Capture One, anything, anything that can edit RAW files will be able to edit the RAW files coming out of this. And the RAW files are fantastic. It's got plenty of dynamic range. So if you do need to go into... Uh, um, uh, a computer or a tablet to edit your files uh, then 
you're going to get a lot out of the DNG files. The, J the JPEGs are fantastic, has excellent monochrome settings, has about four or five different monochrome settings, and you can go in and really tweak those monochrome settings and uh, set filters up, you know, color filters like you did in the old black and white days. It's got full manual control, partial manual control, idiot proof uh, control with the program mode. Uh, you can customize the camera and assign those customizations to one of these uh, user three settings. Actually, you can do six, but you can assign any one of those six to one of these positions on the dial. The dial locks. Uh, the controls are in a great place. You've got a front dial and you've got this back jog wheel here. And I'll just show you some of my settings here. Uh, when I press this one in, I get this little menu here where I can choose any of the filter effects, focusing mode there, uh, metering modes there, snap distance there, and if I want to turn up the screen brightness or down, I can do it there. Press menu to get out of that. Over here, we have uh, the movie mode button, which also activates the Wi-Fi. I've reassigned the movie mode button because this isn't a movie camera. I've reassigned that to be uh in control of the touch screen so here i can sit, switch touch off i can uh, use the touch screen to actually take pictures in snap mode just press that like that there took a picture uh i can say i want it to just move the focus point i want to move the uh, focus point and focus on that point and i can also say move the focus point and shoot like that so it's very very customizable and it does everything really really well uh it's got auto iso um so that shouldn't be a problem you can set your lower limits and your high limits for iso the touch screen operation is second to none uh it just really is all of the menus work in touch screen all of the settings work in touch screen you can use it to fire the shutter. You can use it to set your focus points. You can use it to work with snap focus. So it's got the best touch screen and it's very, very, very snappy. It's quicker than an iPhone. It's brilliant. Uh, the Wi-Fi is great as well. Um, the, there's an app for iPhones and iPads, probably one for Android. I don't know. But uh, connecting to the camera is a breeze it just works and uh, it also transfers uh, the dng files i haven't seen many cameras that will let you transfer the raw file raw files from the app so you can get your raw files straight over to uh, lightroom mobile for example which is brilliant and it can also uh, be uh, running full remote control using the wi-fi where you can change pretty much anything uh, that you would want to change while you're shooting the camera. Uh, so it's just brilliant. Now, one of the bad points of this camera is the tiny battery. People complain about the battery, but in my world, complaining about the battery is like a film shooter complaining about there are not enough shots on a roll of film. Change it out. That's all you've got to do. I've got, uh, I had four batteries with the original GR3. I've got another battery with this one, of course. I bought this second hand. I bought this one brand new. Uh, so now I have five batteries to share between the two. I will not be selling the GR3 because this one shoots at 28 millimeter equivalent. It's got a crop mode for 35 and a crop mode for 50. But this one gives you a 28, 35. This one gives you a 40, 50 and a 71. So I definitely will be keeping both cameras because by now, after owning this one for over a year, uh, I'm very familiar with its operation and they're just a joy to use. Who are they for? They're for travel, street, documentary. They're, f uh, they're just good fun. They're great for environmental portraits, landscape and macro photography and artists. I cannot stress this enough. They're not bread and, but bread and butter photographers' cameras. These are not the type of cameras you're going to be using in a studio day in, day out, doing portraits or doing uh, weddings and bar mitzvahs on commission. This is not going to replace your big rig Sony or your Nikon or your Canon. These are very, very simplified cameras. They're kind of like Leica in that regard. They're, they're not going to be good for wildlife and sports. 
but they are going to be good at what they do. So they're brilliant. Video sucks. Uh, I wish Rico had the guts to exclude video on this, like Leica have uh, done with uh, a couple of their cameras, and just not include it at all. Just keep it to pure photography because that's what these cameras are about, and they are fantastic. I love it. I'm going to give you a more in-depth look at it later. This is the uh, Too Long Didn't Watch review. If you're interested in this camera, get one. You won't regret it. They are fantastic. Adios. Ciao for now. I will uh, be back with a better review, a longer review, about 20 minutes where I will concentrate on the GR3X. There are some reviews coming out now. Um, watch them. Most of them are good. These are people that already know the GR, and I think that's what you should stick to. There's one guy who's, uh, is, he asks on YouTube, is this the perfect for camera for you? And then admits he doesn't get it, doesn't understand it, he doesn't like it, it's too expensive, blah, 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 blah. He's never even picked one up. When you pick one of these up and you start shooting with it and you spend a little time with it, you will know where the money went. They are brilliant. That's it. Bye for now.